Prosecutors say they had the evidence against three men accused of domestic violence, but those cases never went to trial because they say the detective didn't work fast enough. Nine News reporter Kelly Rinke learned new details of one victim's calls for help before her boyfriend was arrested three more times. Three women called Boulder police for help in 2019, and years later, the department tried to follow up because the detective failed to do his job. An audit by prosecutors found Detective Kwame Williams waited too long to investigate five misdemeanor domestic violence cases. Prosecutors say all of them had to be closed, even though three of them had enough evidence for criminal charges. Police reports for those cases detail fear from the women. One said her boyfriend was beating on her told her, I'm going to leave you slumped somewhere. Another told officers her ex sent her harassing text messages. F the cops. I love jail. She said he was violating a protection order. The third woman said her boyfriend grabbed her hair, dragged her off the bed, bit her finger so hard it bled. The report says her boyfriend was arrested three more times for domestic violence, which included stalking and assault. The department reviewed the detective's work in 2022. All three of these cases could not be prosecuted because too much time had passed. Now, the audit said out of the five cases, three of the suspects committed more domestic violence offenses. This was after that original case was assigned to Officer Williams. And since the suspects names are redacted on those police reports, Kim, we just don't know uh, what they were accused of later on. And when you think behind every case, there's more than one person. There's so many people connected to a domestic violence case. Family members, sometimes children. Now, I don't know if that's what these cases were, but the audit reviewed nearly 50 cases in this incident. Thank you, Kelly. A 27-year-old is accused of murder after Aurora police say he shot at teenagers trying to break into his car. Aurora police say the man named Orest Schur confronted two teenagers trying to break into his vehicle Wednesday night. Police say the teenagers took off in a different stolen car, not Schur's, but he still followed them, shooting. The teenagers eventually crashed near Tower Road in 56, and police say that Schur continued firing. One of the teenagers died. Another 13-year-old was hurt. The line is very clear. You simply cannot use deadly force merely to protect property. It doesn't matter if it's your uh, beloved truck or uh, a, a piece of sculpture on your lawn. Colorado does have a make my day law. People can use deadly force against an intruder, but that law only applies to people in their homes. Storms across the metro area were a bust tonight. That happens sometimes. There was a land spout this afternoon out near Watkins. The risk for the eastern plains from Lyman onward, that remains. Chris, you're following some weather still popping out there tonight. Yeah, uh, very, very nasty storms here, Kim, in southeastern Colorado on this Thursday evening. In fact, got basically a huge slew of storms for us for about kind of La Junta on east and south of I-70 in the southeastern corner of the state. And specifically, this storm that is approaching the city of Lamar right now in Prowers County. This is a tornado warrant storm, and this storm has a history of, get this, up to baseball-sized hail has been reported with this storm, 80-mile-an-hour winds as well. So an extremely strong storm, and I know it's been a very, very rowdy spring for us here on the Eastern Plains. We've had basically nonstop severe storms, but what we're seeing tonight might be, in some cases, the, uh, some of the strongest storms that we've seen so far this spring. But again, if you're joining us from Lamar, and Western Prowers County, you need, to be, it, it, you need to be in that safe space, in that innermost room away from any windows, lowest floor possible in that sturdy shelter. Right now, tornado warning goes until 1015 local time. Meantime, off to the north and west, some very strong storms moving their way through parts of Cheyenne, Kit Carson, as well as Lincoln counties. And this is mainly just the south of I-70 tornado watch in place through much of southeastern Colorado. This goes till 1 a.m. It does include Colorado Springs, by the way, here in the Denver area. Just, just fortunate that we just missed out on some of these strongest storms. Now, the good news is these storms will push on off to the east into Kansas over the next couple of hours. And by the time we wake up tomorrow morning, we should wake up to sunny skies. Now, for tomorrow, highs in the upper 70s. Unfortunately, if you're looking for a break from this very stormy pattern you've been locked into here across eastern Colorado, uh, we're not going to get that break here, Kim, for tomorrow or Saturday. But the good news is we do have some drier weather ahead for the end of the weekend and to early next week and also warmer weather as well. I'll tell you about that coming up in my full forecast. OK, one day. All right. Thanks, Chris. The upside of all this wet weather we've seen, Colorado is completely drought free. The map that's usually just a mess of orange, yellow and red is completely 
blank. It's only the second time this has happened in 23 years of record keeping. The only time Colorado was drought free was summer of 2019. Denver Public Schools is firing the super, the principal rather, firing the principal who revealed that untrained school staff had to do weapons pat downs on students. McAuliffe International Principal Kurt Dennis also publicly shared his concern that students charged with attempted murder were being sent back to class. In the weeks after the shooting at East High, Dennis told Nine News the DPS had forced him and his staff to perform regular weapons pat downs on students accused of serious crimes. This week, the district fired him. DPS says the firing had little to do with him speaking out publicly, but more on the sharing what the district called confidential information. Dennis's attorney is planning to take DPS to court. The principal said that a parent recently told him a story made him feel comfortable with the consequences of his decision to speak out. He said, uh, you know, my kid was at your school for three years and um, what you taught her by speaking out is more important than anything she's learned in any of your classrooms. And that meant a lot to me. DPS is saying that there was a leadership issue at McAuliffe, that the district looks forward to working with the McAuliffe community to find a replacement. Police in Lakewood are investigating after they say people threw fireworks out of their car and into groups of people. This happened in the early morning hours at Teller and Colfax. Police say the people they were targeting were in homeless encampments. What joy do you get out of hurting someone that's already out here doing what they can to survive? Several people who live on the street in that area say they saw a white car circling the block and the people inside yelling profanity at them and throwing fireworks. They told us one of the fireworks hit their friend, burning her face and chest. A Lakewood police sergeant saw what was happening and shot at the car. Lakewood police say the agent thought the driver was trying to hit him. It breaks my heart because it's like, I feel like it's hard enough out here for us. Like, as it is, and, and the weather's changing, it's up and down, just for people to have shelter. Now you have to worry, like, you just don't know, like, what to expect of, like, just random, just random, like, violence. Lakewood police say they took the car, uh, the people in the car into custody. They released them. They're still looking into the fireworks throwing and the officer who fired his gun. People can go back to their homes tonight in Broomfield after a gas leak. North Metro Fire says that leak was near Westlake Drive and Grove Way, not far from Broomfield Commons. A dozen homes were evacuated for a few hours this afternoon. North Metro Fire says Excel stopped the leak and is working on a full repair. Investigators in Jefferson County say they have seized $5 million worth of drugs with enough fentanyl to kill hundreds of thousands of people. Nine News reporter Cole Sullivan spoke with investigators who say this is the largest bust the drug task force has ever made. And Kim, this week a grand jury indicted 16 people on felony drug charges and for other crimes. Investigators think they were buying drugs from a cartel in Mexico, then selling them across the metro area. Detectives say they confiscated more than 400 pounds of meth, 325,000 pills laced with fentanyl, and one and a half pounds of fentanyl powder, which they suspected was going to be pressed into pills, adding up to more than 350,000 lethal doses. Times have changed. Tactics, tactics have changed. Um, 10, 15 years ago, you take a pound or a few pounds of meth off the street, and that was a big bust back then. Now when you're taking hundreds of pounds off at a time, that's, that's becoming more and more normal now, just the, the sheer volume of narcotics that are available out there. His team has their work cut out for him. The 16 people are also facing indictments for illegal gun possession, attempted kidnapping, attempted car theft, leaving the scene of an accident, and more. Ten of those people were arrested. Investigators are still trying to put handcuffs on six others. And they were able to use, what, a wiretap in this case? Yeah, that's one of the things about this case, which began back in August, is, is they used a wiretap to help arrest some of these folks and gather evidence. The investigator says that that requires a certain level, a th certain threshold. They have to exhaust all of their normal investigative options before they can get to that point. Yeah, but what a bust in this case. Okay, all right, thank you, Cole. Denver is giving up on its plans to outsource its migrant support to a private security company. Garter World is best known for its armored trucks and security guards. The city wanted to pay them $40 million to take over sheltering migrants and serving other basic needs. There are about 600 migrants in shelters across the city right now, with dozens of people arriving in Denver each day. The city council had concerns about the plan, so they're putting it on hold until the new mayor and council are sworn in later this month.
top. Mayor-elect Mike Johnston's team wouldn't share if he's interested in having Garda World handle the migrant response. The Supreme Court decision allowing creative businesses to deny services based on the business owner's views of same-sex marriage set off concerns that that discrimination could extend to other groups. The conservative justices agreed with Littleton's Lori Smith that her right to free speech extends to discriminating against same-sex couples by refusing to make them wedding websites. Today, Smith and her attorney joined me on Next, where I asked whether the ruling could be used to deny creative services based on a customer's race or age or gender or nationality. Could they cite this ruling to deny services to an interracial couple if that conforms with their beliefs? Well, this case is about is about speech and what you're saying there. Some people may have very despicable views when it comes uh, to speech, but the court said that people should have the right to speak freely, even on topics that they find offensive. But the most important point here is that nobody, regardless of how you identify, regardless of whether you're of your race or your religion, no one should be denied goods and services. So that's good news for all of us. The ruling, of course, does allow business owners to deny goods and services again if the business owner says they would be compelled to create a creative message that they don't believe in. In my full 15 minute conversation with Lori Smith and her attorney, we discussed the recent reports that the lone same sex wedding website request that was brought up in her case was actually fake. Both said they had nothing to do with faking that request. The full conversation is on 9news.com and on the next YouTube channel. As families poured out of 4th of July festivities, someone on a motorcycle was racing down the street going the wrong way right in front of officers. A historic approval for a drug meant to f fight Alzheimer's. That's despite its big price tag and some doctors' doubts. We're learning more about what's next for the company responsible for the Titanic Tour sub. Spoiler alert, not much. We're back in 60 seconds.